When it comes to doing your electrical projects, are you more like this guy? What the? What the? Uh, what the? Why the? Who the? How the? <clears throat> or are you more like this guy? Alrighty. Game's coming on. I think I got this right. Let's see. Alright. Yeah, Alrighty. Okay. I'm the one they call Lenny. I am your spirit animal, and I shall guide you through your electrical journey moving forward. One of the most important parts is identification. Here we have a two gang box. Two gang, I don't know, a double gang. Maybe it's a gaggle of gangs and there's two gangs, rival, whatever it is, this is it. So today we have a single pull switch and then we have a three-way switch. With a three-way switch, on one side there has to be your three wire and a switch leg, the one that goes to the line, and the other side would be the three wire and the power. So that's, how, that's all you need to know so far with the three-way. The other is the switch leg and then power. The switch leg is what goes up to your light, and we've got to power it. But let's say we have, I don't know, a 10 gang, a bunch of wires. So you don't get confused. I always bring my switch legs and three wire in the top. So I know those are the ones going up. When my power is going in and out, I go in the bottom, simple enough. But if you have a lot of wire, sometimes it gets confusing. So what I do is I'll take my switch leg and I'll crimp it, this right here, two, three. This way, when you peel off the sheathing, you could feel those crimps in there. You don't have to identify anything, put tape, or you could put them in the top or the bottom, it doesn't matter, but this way you know what your switch leg is. I use a dull razor knife, different kind of knives you can use or what have you, but I make sure that it's dull. I use these blades over and over again, but if I'm gonna be doing a whole house, I use a dull razor blade so I don't cut into the wires underneath the sheathing. What I'll do is I'll put a little slice on the top and on the bottom, a little slice on the top and the bottom. Sometimes different wire, some comes off a lot easier. I bought a small roll, to, I don't even know where they make it from. And sometimes you have to go down the center of your Romex in order to pull that outside sheathing off, okay? Most of the times, it just depends. If it's cold weather, you can just, uh, this is what you have to do if you're working outside. But this, it doesn't pull off real easy. But most of the time, it's just a slice, slice, and pull it off. It's that simple. Three wire, usually you have to run your razor knife right down the center of it. That's where the ground wire is. Don't go too deep. And then you peel it off and then you're ready to go, okay? First thing we start off with is the grounds. Separate all our wires. Never mind the sound you hear. I'm in my garage. People let their stupid dogs bark. I've got stupid dogs, but I don't let them bark so much. So you're gonna hear that. Don't worry about it, okay? We wanna leave two grounds, right? So we've got four grounds in here for the four wires. We're gonna take these two grounds, gonna fold it over our finger like so, squeeze that together, and right there, we're gonna cut them off even with the two that we folded. Squeeze those wires together like so, twist. Come up around it and twist it and pull it back to you. I'm gonna just keep on twisting that. Clip off the ends, stick our wire nut on there. All right, red wire nut, like it, it's a little bigger. I don't have another one. I'm sure it'd be a lot cooler if I did. But I've got the two ground wires now. Set those aside. Separate all of our white wire. Code states that you need six inches of free conductor from the back of the box to the front. That's good so you can splice uh, everything in, squeeze it in good. It doesn't get in the way of uh, your switches when you push them in. So we're going to guesstimate that. Can't go with more. You don't want to go a lot more. Simple and easy with this. We're not going to leave any conductors hanging out. So all we do is put them even right next to one another. It can be as long as you want. It doesn't matter. 
because we're going to trim them afterwards, after we're done splicing them together. See them right there? Just make sure your sheathing or the, uh, the insulation is right even with one another. The ends don't matter because we're going to trim it anyways. Same thing what we did with the grounds. We're just twisting all together. This is so the splice doesn't come apart in the wire nut. A lot of people just don't even do this and just wire nut it off. And some of these wires pull back and then you'll know, have a troubleshooting issue. But see that right there? What do we do? Trim off the edge. We already know that it's nice and tight by all these. It's not going anywhere. So just as long as all the conductors are touching, tan wire nut, a little smaller. Take these, stuff these back in your box. Nice and neat, right? Now remember that first part, what we talked about, what was important? Glad to see that you're still paying attention. So we've got our 14-3 wire. Got it pulled aside. That's for our three-way. Now we're not sure which one of these wires are for our power for the switch leg. Remember what we did? Run your thumb across it, right across the top. I don't feel anything. I don't feel anything. There's my three notches. I know this is my switch leg. So I'm going to put this aside and then my travelers aside, right? So now I need to pigtail these down for a power for the three way and a power for the switch leg. Little trick I do, I'll take it and I'll barely put my strippers on it and I'll strip that out a little bit. It's just a little hack that I do. When it's, when it's hotter out, it's a lot easier to do. This is winter time. See that? Okay. Pardon the camera work here, but we're gonna do the same thing we did with those grounds. We're gonna take them and we're gonna fold them. Look at that. And then we just compress them like we did the grounds and twist them together. Same thing really fast, like I say, when it's warmer out, those things come off like butter. Look, that looks like a mess, right? Doesn't matter. We're gonna trim it. We know all the wires are together. So we're gonna trim it back, put our wire nut. Tighten that baby on there. No conductor showing in that wire nut, right? Push it back in there. Now, we've got our hot, one for the uh, three-way, one for the switch leg. Simple enough. Take it, and I wrap them around one another. And again, what if we have a four-gang or five-gang or whatever? Sorry for hitting the camera. And we do the same with the three-way. So we know that that hot is with that three-way. Simple as that, right? Take our grounds that we had, wrap them around if you wanted to, wrap it around the switch leg. I push it down first, I get it in nice and snug, up, bend it back. Same thing with the three way, Let's start down. I'm pushing all my wires back so they don't hit the back of my switch. You try it the best you can. Up, then back down again, and here we are. Trim them off. Even. Now you're ready for the uh, for the finish, or at least the drywall. So I push up, push them all the way back. Working on a construction site. A lot of the times, the drywall guys will take their uh, routers and they'll push it right in. Well, they may go to the inside of the box first before they find the outside and catch your wires. I found that a lot of times. So you want to push them inside so they can ride around the outside of it. And then there you are. You have a made up two gang box for a three way and a single pole switch. Simple as that. Remember on the three way, on the other side is a switch leg. So you're doing the same thing, but with the switch leg on the other side. So simple, right? What next is important? Remember we're talking about importance. What is the final thing we do? You know what time it is. It's taco time. Oh yeah. Smash that like button, subscribe. Thanks for watching.